well, <laughs> journal, did we expect it to go off without a hitch? Because it sure as hell didn't. On the outside looking in. <laughs> it's really what I should expect these days, but you know how it is. I am me, and me tends to get I into more shit than I think we can handle. But we do handle it. Uh, and we get the payout may have cost me another scar or two to ruin whatever <laughs> left of me left of my my body but it's no matter <laughs> as I was saying I I met with a man uh, Julian Julian was his name things were fine he was a typical rough and tough cowboy type the kind that is either a total sweetheart or a total shit stain he turned out to be the latter. <laughs> you can see why I never went for those men back home. Everything was fine for the first hour. We chatted. He jumped right in on talking about all the ladies he's had. His notches. I just smile and say nothing. I guess making him feel comfortable enough to continue. Like I was inviting him to go into details. Yes, please do make it even harder for me not to take your eyes. Make it harder to reason on why I shouldn't take away any ability you have to allow your gaze to fall on another woman. And to force such an unpleasant and uncomfortable conversation on another of my kind, let alone whatever else you seem to force on them. I decided I should start a different type of collection. I should start a different collection of jars. I don't think I'd find one small enough to fit him, though. And that journal is where my mind wandered as he droned on and on and on and on and on and on. And on and holy fuck fuck have you ever realized how boring men like this make everything sound how fake their stories sound even if they are real it's no wonder i was more partial to a very different type of working man than these at least they could tell a good story even if it was lies he broke my wandering eye by asking me if i was listening <laughs> though I've always had a knack for twisting the truth, to tell a total lie. That is a talent I never seem to be able to pin down. Why does he care anyways? It's not like I, he thinks I'm here to actually listen to him. We both know what I wanted him to think I was here for. So I told him in my sweetest voice that I was sorry. I mentioned having a terrible headache from the wine, and I, I wanted to leave. He told me I could, uh, once I finished what we came here for. So here we go again. I've laid with monsters before. I invited them to come up from under the bed and sleep beside me. Hopefully, if I just gave what I could give, it wouldn't want any more. Ela told me I could call it at any point. But I wasn't scared. It's funny, isn't it? To think that I should have only called it if I felt scared. But in my mind, I faced down bigger men than him. I've slept with worse men than him, begged more disgusting men than him to shoot me where I stood. Yet here I stand. Maybe, uh, maybe something in me was unsatiated part I'm trying to outrun a cat hoping for something to come along to sharpen its claws on to sink my teeth into 
I left the disgust long enough to build, deciding he was exactly the one I wanted to fill the void of my chaos with. So without thought of how I'd remedy the situation, I entered that room with him. No plan in sight, only an ending that the voice in my head whispered, enticing me into a vulnerable position only to see if I could get myself out. The room was dim, fine enough. The saloon was lively. That's either a plus or a detriment to my safety. I took in every exit, every possibility in a matter of seconds. I paid too much attention to the structural surroundings and not enough to my company. It was almost instant that he was grabbing at me. <laughs> I didn't yell. I felt numb. I struggled with my arms, but all I could think of was what Ela said. The feeling of a man asserting his ability to hold you down. The need they feel to prove that they can keep you down if they want to. And Julian was able to wrestle me to the bed. But the way I fell, I was able to get my feet up and under his stomach, pushing him backwards just enough. And in that split second, I removed a knife I stowed under my corset. It was on the blunter side, but a knife's always going to do what a knife is meant to with enough force. Julian didn't notice it in my hands as he flung himself back on top of me. I wrapped my legs around him, securing my prey as I began digging the knife into his back. He yelled as he struggled, trying to roll away with me, and I went with his movements, swaying and then rolling us over, him secured under me this time. Taking him by his hair, I tilted his head back. I remember the look he gave me as I stared at him through narrowed eyes, my own head tilted, thinking about what in his life brought him to the unfortunate circumstance of having to cross my path. The blood. Blood everywhere, so the thought of using a pillow meant nothing now. So, just end it. I kept telling myself, just end it. Julian tried to reason with me. He begged me not to. He had a family, people expecting him to return, relying on him. Business. Business. So did I. But did that stop him? Julian begged me not to. So I did.